All right, here are solutions to problem 59 off the math subject GRE practice test. We're told that A is a matrix, more specifically a real three by three matrix, and we're asked which of the following conditions does not imply, kind of annoying, that A is invertible. So the way I think about this is four of these five conditions imply that A is invertible. So what I wanna do is assume this condition is true and see if it implies that A is invertible. And if that happens, then I can cross off that as a possibility. That's the way I'm going about it anyways. Um, so A is invertible. This square matrix A is invertible if and only if its determinant does not equal zero. Uh, so that'll be really useful to reference. I think we can rule out these top two possibilities just knowing that fact. Uh, so let's see, if negative A is invertible, then that means that the determinant of negative A better not equal zero. Because like I said, uh, the square matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant does not equal zero. So if this is invertible, its determinant does not equal zero. Um, but negative A is just the product of the negative identity matrix and this matrix A. And you're like, yeah, I knew that. That's why would you write it like that? Well, because there's this nice fact about square matrices that the determinant of a product is equal to the product of the determinants. So the determinant of this product is equal to the product of these two determinants. So what? Well, notice that now I have something times something does not equal zero. All right, this is some number, this is some number. When I multiply those two numbers together, I get some number other than zero. Think about what you know about multiplying numbers together and getting zero. This implies that the determinant of A does not equal zero. Uh, so what that is saying is that if, the, if negative A is invertible, then A is also invertible. So this first statement does imply that A is invertible. Now what about the second statement? There exists a positive integer K such that the determinant of A to the K power does not equal zero. Well, this is kind of an extrapolation of what I did up here. Uh, the determinant of a product equals the product of the determinant. A to the k power is just the product of A with itself k times. Uh, so what I can say is that the determinant of A to the k power is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of A k times. In other words, the determinant of A to the k power. Uh, okay, so there exists a positive integer k such that this does not equal zero. So I don't know what the determinant of A is equal to, but when I raise that number to the kth power, I get some num number other than zero. That implies that the determinant of A does not equal zero. Therefore, A is invertible. Cross off B. All right, problem or part C here. There's a lot going on in part C. I'm actually gonna come up here and write some stuff. Uh, for part C, I wanna remind you of a couple of facts. Um, this is kind of our criteria, or maybe I should use the letter A there because it doesn't really matter. Um, v is an eigenvector and lambda is an eigenvalue if this is true for some matrix T. Uh, and you're like, yeah, right, I remember that. What's that have to do with anything? Well, what I'm going to show is that if this statement is true, then the only possible eigenvalues of this matrix I minus A are zero. And a matrix whose only eigenvalues are zero is what's called nilpotent. And a nilpotent matrix will have some nice properties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this fact to show you that this matrix right here is nilpotent. Maybe I'll even write that I minus A is nilpotent. That's all one word, even though the spacing looks kind of weird there. Another fact I want to prove to you is that if you take a power of a matrix and multiply it by its eigenvector, what you will get is a, that power, ooh, that's that meant to be a lambda, that power of your eigenvalue multiplied by that eigenvector. Uh, and the way I can show this to you, I mean, I guess you could prove it more it iteratively, but let me just kind of prove this to you up here maybe. If I take, let's let k equal two, just for an easy example. Um, T squared times V is the same as T times TV. But you're like, wait a minute, this TV thing right here is the same as lambda times V. So I get T times lambda V. So 
but lambda is just a scalar, so I can just pull that out in front and get lambda times tv, right? This lambda goes here and the t times the v. But wait a minute, we just talked about this. tv is equal to lambda times v. So instead of writing tv right here, I can write lambda times v, and what I get is lambda squared v. And I don't know, you could show this just with induction or just kind of common sense. Oh, right, if there were three of them, I could do that three times and four and so forth. Um, that leads to this statement right here, which I'm going to end up using down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this matrix I minus A, and maybe we'll kind of let lambda be an eigenvalue of this matrix I minus A. And if that's true, then I minus A times its eigenvector would be equal to that eigenvalue lambda times V. And as I just showed right here, uh, if I took I minus A to the K power, that would be equal to lambda to the K power times V. But wait a minute, I minus A to the K power equals zero, right? So this part equals zero. So I'm taking zero times a vector, I just get zero. What that's saying is this entire thing would be equal to zero. So lambda to the K power times V equals zero, that implies that lambda is equal to zero. So what this is saying is that if lambda is an eigenvalue of I minus A, lambda must be equal to zero. I minus A is a matrix that only has eigenvalues of zero. That tells me that I minus A is nilpotent. You can either be done and be like, oh, if I minus A is nilpotent, then A must be invertible. And it's like, wait, why? I don't know. Oh, because someone told me to memorize that at some point, or I have know that fact about nilpotent matrices. Um, yeah, that doesn't really work for me. So I'm going to go a little bit further and show why this implies that A is invertible. Um, and to do so, I'm going to show one more fact that I think would be useful, not just for this problem, but generally speaking. So let's go back up here where it's kind of my scratch work. Um, not a whole lot you can say about sums of matrices. There's a ton you can say about products of matrices or powers is kind of an extrapolation, but sums is a lot harder to do anything with. Um, but there are some special circumstances. Um, for example, if you take a matrix, which I'll just call T here, and add some, uh, some constant times our identity matrix to it, uh, what ends up happening? Well, let me just talk you through what happens. Let's go through the argument. If V is an eigenvector, then when I multiply T plus, when I do this, I can distribute and get here. Uh, just taking the V and sort of distributing it through the parentheses. Um, but I know that because V is an eigenvector, T times V is equal to lambda V. So I kind of get lambda V on this side. Um, and on this side, I'm multiplying by the identity matrix. I guess I don't really even have to write that. I could write that as K times V. So what I could do is I could factor out V and get lambda plus K times V. So the point that I'm making is that if, if lambda is an eigenvalue of my matrix T, then lambda plus K must be an eigenvalue of my matrix T plus K times I. All right, so that's actually a really useful fact that anytime you know eigenvalues of a matrix, you can figure out eigenvalues of sums of scalar multiples of the identity matrix of that original matrix. So that'll end up being a really useful fact because I know a whole lot about I minus A. So what I'm saying is, where the hell am I going to write this? I guess further up. Maybe it's time to, time to switch color. Okay, so putting together several facts. What I want to do is for my matrix T in this equation, I want to use I minus A. So in place of T right here, I am going to write I minus A. Um, and then in place of K, I'm going to use negative one. So I'm going to plug in a negative one right there. So I got plus negative one I, in other words, minus I. Why the hell did I do that? Well, because I want this I and this minus I to go away so I can get information about A because really my goal is to determine whether A is invertible. So what I'm doing is in place of T, I'm using a matrix that I knew that I, that's relevant to this problem. And in place of K, I'm using negative one. So if I take that thing and multiply it by an eigenvector of my matrix T, or I minus A in this case, 
what I must get is an eigenvalue of my matrix T, which remember the only eigenvalues of my matrix T are zero, plus K, which in this case is negative one, because I'm subtracting one of these I's, times V. Wait, so what did I just show here? I got, when the dust settles on this side, I have negative A times V, the I and the negative I cancel out. And on this side, I have zero plus negative one, I got negative one V. What I just showed is that negative one is the only eigenvalue of this matrix negative A. So what that tells me is negative A is invertible. You're like, oh, so close, that's not quite what you wanted, right? You didn't want that negative A is invertible, you wanted that A is invertible. But right, remember in part A, we showed that negative A invertible implies that A is invertible. So what I've shown is that if I minus A is nilpotent, then negative A must be invertible. And if negative A is invertible, then A must be invertible. What that tells us is that this implies that A is invertible. So therefore, this is not the answer to the question. D is, I don't know, the quickest answer, I guess, to get through. The set of all vectors of the form AV where V is in R3 is R3. What this tells you is what's called the rank. Or maybe let's write that a little bit differently. What, what that tells you is the column space has a dimension of three. Uh, so you can kind of think about the column space as kind of your range in some sense. The dimension of the range, we're covering up three dimensions here. The dimension of the column space is three aka the rank of this matrix is three. Uh, but the rank of a matrix tells you the number of pivots that it has. If, um, and so since we have this three by three square matrix with three pivots, what that tells us implies that A is invertible. Uh, the number of pivots in an echelon form. So if you were to reduce this guy in echelon form, you'd have three values on the diagonals. What that tells you is that the matrix is invertible. So um, if the dimension of the column space is three, then the determinant of A, or A is invertible. So this can't be the answer here. So I guess by process of elimination, my answer is E, and I'm done with this problem. Um, but really, for solution videos, I probably shouldn't rely on process of elimination. I should probably tell you, talk you through why this is true. There exist three linearly independent vectors, V1, V2, and V3, in R3, such that if I take my matrix A and multiply it by any one of these vectors, I do not get zero for my answer. Um, okay, so I want to come up with a matrix A that is not invertible. So let's see, maybe I'll do simplest case possible, something like this. Uh, this is clearly not invertible because I have these three zeros down here on the bottom because the determinant is zero, because there's only two pivots. For whatever argument you want to make, this guy right here is not an invertible matrix uh, because it projects three dimensions down to two dimensions. And an inversion would have to take the two dimensions back up to three dimensions, but that would be sending one thing to two things that wouldn't be well-defined anyways. This is the matrix A that I'm going to reference in this problem. And what I am going to do is come up with three linearly independent vectors. Um, and I want these, ve I want the, anytime I take this matrix and multiply it by one of these vectors, I have to not get zero for my answer. So let's see for V1, let's pick on an easy one, maybe one, zero, zero. Clearly this times this would not be equal to zero. Uh, this times this would be equal to exactly V1 if you went through and did the matrix multiplication. Uh, V2. Let's keep it similarly simple like this. 0, 1, 0. Again, if you multiply this times this, it leaves it alone. Uh, so I get 0, 1, 0 here. Clearly, that does not equal 0. And clearly, these two guys are linearly independent. No scalar multiple of this guy equals this guy. And then you're like, oh, OK. And for 3, I see what you're doing here. Make it 0, 0, 1. No. 0, 0, 1 would be linearly independent from the two of these guys. But there's a problem with using 0, 0, 1. The product of this matrix in 0, 0, 1 would be 0. And that's I'm trying to make the product of each of my vectors in my matrix not be equal to 0. But that's OK. I can just do something like this. First off, note that these three vectors are all linearly independent. Um, 
I guess you cannot get this one from sums of these two, uh, scalar sums of scalar multiples of these two, because you're always going to have a zero in the third position here, and this one uh, you need there to be the one in that position. And then you can't combine any these two in any way to get this guy, uh, because in order to have a one up here, you'll have to use at least exactly one of these guys, which would leave you with one down on the bottom, which would screw things up here. And similarly, you can't combine these two to get these this guy here, um, because neither this nor this has an entry in the second position, but this guy does. Anyway, these guys are clearly linearly independent, but if you find the product of A and each of these guys, you'll see that it is not zero in each case. Uh, in this case, maybe I'll write this A V one is equal to one zero zero, A V two is equal to zero one zero, and A V three equal to, uh, let's see if you were gonna go through and multiply this together, you would get a one in the first position, a zero in the second position, and a zero in the third position. So it is not zero. Uh, what that tells us is, so what I've done is I've produced three linearly independent vectors. My matrix times each of these vectors does not equal zero. And uh, I have not implied that A is invertible because one such possible A would be this A right here, which is not invertible.